Okay, now we've done adding negative numbers and subtracting negative numbers. Now we're going to multiply negative numbers. And I hope that you get these negative numbers down because if you want to go flip through an algebra book, you're going to see we're not going to stop. You might be thinking, oh, if I can just get past negative numbers. No, the reason that we teach these things is because you're going to use them a lot later. Okay, negative numbers is huge. So, now we're going to multiply them. And by the way, if there's no symbol there, that means positive. So that's why you never had symbols all through when you were doing alpha, beta, gamma, and all that, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. We didn't have symbols because if there is no symbol, then you assume it's a positive number. But if you want to, and you like to have them in there, feel free. But if it's negative, you've got to put the symbol because we're not mind readers here. Okay? Multiplication is fast adding of the same number. So you could say 3 times negative 2, or you could say negative 2 counted 3 times. So you could put negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2, and what's that going to be? Pretty, pretty easy, right? When you put it that way. So when you multiply, let me think, let's say that uh, you borrowed. Who's got the most money between you two ladies there? Okay, so you're the banker. So let's say that she's a, she likes to spend money, obviously, right? And you like to save it. So she borrows two bucks from you on Monday. She borrows two more bucks on Tuesday. She borrows two more bucks on Wednesday. How much does she owe you, banker? That's right. Well, it's minus to her, <laughs> okay, because you have, okay? So this is how it would look because you owe two, you owe two more, you owe two more, so now you owe six bucks. You're in the hole. You're in the hole. You've got to pay that girl off, okay? So the way you can show it is you could either put it as an adding problem or you could put it as a multiplication problem. But what I want you to learn is, is that when you're multiplying two numbers and one of the signs is negative, then the answer is going to be negative. So if you had, got a couple examples here, same thing. You could turn off the machine if you want. Without the thing, if I have two uh, parentheses, it still means multiplication. So if I have negative... 6 times a positive 3, the answer would be positive or negative? negative. Because there's a symbol there is negative, it's going to be negative. Okay, so what's 3 times 6? 18. 18. So that didn't change. The only thing that's new about this lesson is you've got to watch those symbols. Is that a positive or a negative? Let's try another one. Positive 7 times negative 6. Is it going to be a positive or negative answer? negative because it's got one negative symbol. Now forget the signs and just say, what's 7 times 6? 42. Very good. That's a hard multiplication problem. This is okay? Okay. I'm setting you up for the hard one, though. This is pretty simple because you can relate it to addition. But here's the hard one. We're going to do 3 times 7 four ways. 3 times 7, 3 times 7, 3 times 7, 3 times 7. By the way, what is 3 times 7, everybody? 21. Okay, so that's not, that's not the hard part of these problems, right? What's that dot mean? If the dot was down low, it would be decimal. But if it's floating between two numbers like 4 times 7, it's another way to show multiplication. Yeah, but make sure. But if you haven't been using math, you see, you need to learn this. There's three ways to show multiplication. You could do a floating dot, you can do an X, or you can do parentheses side by side. All three of those mean the same as the X, okay? So if you have a, and let's start with this, positive 3 times a positive 7, we know the answers are all 21, so we'll put those in. What we're focusing in now I'm assuming you know how to multiply, is the symbols. Positive times a positive is going to be a... That's what you've been doing all your life, except you didn't have those little plus signs hiding in there. Okay? What if you had a negative times a positive? What's that going to be? Negative. What if you have a positive times a negative? Also negative. Ah, here's the tough one. A negative times a negative. Let's think about it a little bit. Just looking at this, we've got positive and then we've got two negatives. So 
is probably going to be positive. We could do kind of logically that way. But let's, let, let me just give you about three ways, because people really struggle with this, and let me just help you. One way I think of it is, if you've just got just one negative sign, just one negative sign, and you've got just one line. But if you have two of the same signs, like two positives, you've got two lines. See that? If you've got two of the same signs, you've got two signs, okay? Another way you could think of it is, what if you were to just put the negative sign out here? Well, we know that this is a negative, and that would be the opposite of that, right? So that would make it a positive. Maybe that helps you. Another way you could think of it, if you're kind of a, who's the writers here? Who likes to write or email or text? None of you? Okay. Have you ever heard of a double negative? When I used to be a, a teacher, and I lived in Georgia, and they had a lot of fairs. Like we'd have a parade, and then we'd have a little fair afterwards. It was a big thing in the spring to go to the geranium festival. That's what it was. And so I would sometimes say to my students, are you going to the fair? And this one young man said, I'm, I ain't not going. And I thought to myself, I ain't not going. I said, okay, I'll see you there tonight. He said, no, 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 no. I ain't not going. <laughs> I said, well, if you're not not going, then you must be going. Does that make sense? And so if you have two negatives, you end up, like we did before, negative, negative, you end up coming back to a positive. So if you think of it that way, negative times a negative will give you a positive. Now don't be confused. If you add two negatives, you're going to have a negative answer. But if you multiply two negatives, you're going to get a positive answer. Okay. So, here's one of the examples in the book. What's that? I know 5 times 12 is 60, but I want to know what the symbol is. I got a negative times a negative. Very good. Which I could either leave plain, right? Because that means positive, or I could put little plus. Either way it works. Okay. I just want to make sure that you have seen a pattern. How much is that? 12. If I have no symbol, what does it mean? If I put that, what's the opposite of a positive? Negative. Okay, put that, what's that make it? Back to a positive. I left room this time. You right? Okay. Have you noticed a pattern though? I mean, if I have two symbols, start with positive, that makes it negative, that makes it positive, I'm back to where I started, right? So if I have an even number of negative signs, will it be positive or negative? What if I, when I mean even, two, four, or six? If I have groups of two, it's always going to be positive. What if I have just three? It's going to be negative. What if I have just one? Negative. negative. So if you ever see something like this, where someone just walks into the room and just puts this with all the parentheses and stuff, you say, well, there's two groups of two, so that's got to be a positive. So that's a pattern that we've observed just by doing some problems.